the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ part 2 first lesson John chapter 3 verse 3 second lesson Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 golden text Matthew chapter 18 verse 4 brethren a summary of what have been read to you is the theme of our revelation if I may ask how many of the kings queens emperors the lords and traditional rulers will enter into the kingdom of God how many of the money magnets the rich men the degree holders the principalities the high academic professors the so-called big men and important and good men of the society will qualify for entry into the kingdom a great many people still argue that they cannot kneel down for a human being like themselves others argue that they cannot remove their shoes from their feet others argue that they cannot confess their sins to any human being like themselves others feel that they cannot humble themselves like small children to a human being like themselves because they are not his servants. To buttress their argument, some maintain that they are fathers of 20 children. They have motor cars and story buildings and are very important personalities. Examine these categories of people carefully and critically determine how many of them and the so-called noble men will be admitted into the kingdom of God if a person talks to you you will swiftly ret retort that he should not talk like that to you because you are not his servants at times somebody is talking to you instead of responding to him in a peaceful way you not only hush him up but slap him also Humility is the foundation of the kingdom. This is to indicate to you that the kingdom of God does not require any other thing apart from humility. If you are riding in your luxurious car with music system, air conditioner and tinted glass to match and meet a boy who is not well dressed or a poor man with tattered dress, will you give him a lift? In the same token, when you are properly clad with your full suit and shoes to match, your hat and walking stick, and on your way you find a boy fetching water at a tap. If he requests that you lift the bucket of water for him, will you do it? And will you not refer to him as an insolent boy? When you dress gorgeously, and on your way to your business, somebody asks you to buy ground nuts or any other things from the market for him. Would you not think that such a person is demented? All those who are striving for the position of glory, do you think they are seeking after the glory of God? All those who are looking for high positions in the church, in school, in government, in politics and in the community does it indicate to you that they are seeking the kingdom of God is there any indication that those who have refused to refrain from anger and quarreling can even have a share in this kingdom you have been advised not to quarrel not to fight not to be angry and not to abuse who has heeded this advice do not reject the instruction of God. You have been instructed not to curse, not to fornicate, steal, and lead abominable life. But in your arrogance and pomposity, you defy the instruction and refuse to comply. Regarding yourself as a big man, your importance is not taken into consideration in this kingdom of God. Sometimes you want to speak 
the word of God to somebody and he tells you he is not prepared to listen because he has been an old and foundation member of a protestant church and should not talk to him in that vein if you encounter such a person can you believe that he can be admitted into the kingdom maybe you encounter a certain woman who retorts that you have no right to talk to her in that way because her son is your age grade and that if you have been the insulting type you should go to insult your mother at home these situations and indications that these situations are indications that the whole world is both blind and deaf to be able to enter the kingdom you must be born again my only pleasure is so that I do not employ any other language in consulting this oracle. I use the language which you quite understand. I am using the name of our Lord Jesus Christ which you shout Jesus, Jesus, Jesus as the operative word in my explanation. How can a person who is not born again and is truly repent and serve God. When you claim so many titles, you claim to be the first daughter or the first son. You are so proud and pompous that you tend to look down upon others. How will you serve God with such an attitude? You are aware that when you invite people to your house and they are properly clad with tie and shoes, if you are looking for somebody to fetch water to be used in preparing food or somebody to bring more seats for people to sit down, you will not have the boldness to approach any of them to run that errand because they regard themselves as big men. Before their arrival, they had known that if they decide in good time to honor the invitation and of course well dressed even if they have not got the dresses to put on they would borrow or rent from the stores in order to impress the host of their importance if any of the guests who is a millionaire but dressed in tattered dress and is humble and me you will definitely walk to him and ask him to fetch some chairs from somewhere for visitors. You are free to send him for an errand or use him as you like since he has not shown any indication of being a big man. So it is in this kingdom except we repent we cannot enter into the kingdom. The field is extensive, the harvest is great. But where are the laborers? If you are not yet ready for, if you are not ready, you cannot enter. Except you forsake your pride and pomposity, anger, and the tendency to regard yourself as a very important person or a very good man. Even if you remain here for 100 years, it will be impossible for you to enter. Most of you have parents at home. Why have they not come into this fold? Some of them claim they are important persons in the Protestant Church. Others argue, but for the very important position they have in one church or the other churches. It is this important position they purport to have held that hinders them from joining us in the fold. That is why some of them come to inquire from you what positions will be given to them should they come to brotherhood. When do you consider such persons will ever come in here? Pride goes before a fall. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ are always true. Upon all we strive to be, if we do not refrain from pride, from pomposity and arrogance, 
from the tendency of I have already known, and from arrogating to yours to ourselves the position of the son of the soil, it will be impossible for us to be admitted into this kingdom. Right now you are running from pillar to post to find money in order to serve God. Have you been told that God is so poor that you should find money to serve him? You look for a very expensive white material to make your sultan because you because your old sultan is very brownish, stained and dirty. Have you been told that God looks at the whiteness of your sultan? Another person argues that since he has never seen the four walls of a school and had never learned to speak the English language, it would be impossible for him to serve God. And I ask, does God look for these, for those who speak English? Why is it that when you are given pieces of advice, you fail to abide by such advice? The reason is that you have not yet repented. Abstain from all appearances of evil. The gospel is preached to you from January to December every year that you should refrain from exasperation, fornication, quarreling and fighting. But who amongst you has complied with the exhortations? As often as you are advised to forsake sin, the more you murmur against God and get so much angry that you ask if your sins are more grievous than those committed by others. Some 20 years ago, you had a dispute or misunderstanding with somebody, but till today you are still begrudging him because you have refused to become reconciled to him. Do you believe that as long as you cannot forgive a person for the offenses he has committed against you, that you can do any good thing for him? Do you believe that as long as you continue to be intimate with somebody's wife or husband, you will have no time at your disposal to serve God in peace and concord? Brethren, it is conclusive that if you do not abstain from all manners of sin, you cannot serve God and do what is good. Note also that if you do not become like a little child, you cannot enslave yourself to any person. If in spite of your elevated position like that of a doctor, president, governor, king, emperor, millionaire, you humble yourself to the extent of serving others, that will be rewarded handsomely. Except you become as a child, you cannot serve others. It is not simple for you to advise or send on an errand a man who visits you with his wife and full-grown children. God is always searching the arts and reins. Before a visitor at your house, Introduces, in, introduces his children, he has something in his sleeves. He wants to indicate to you that at his age he is not an infant. Before somebody introduces himself to you as having many prominent children, some of whom are doctors and engineers, or as big a landlord owning houses in all cities of the federation having a fleet of motor transport by this mode of introduction he is trying to impress upon how important he is so that you know how to behave towards him so brethren do not be deceived by any person Whoever does not repent and turn over a new leaf from his past life cannot practice the gospel of God. It is said, the kingdom is not entered by wealth, 
but by faith. If you do not take advice, can you repent? The teaching given to you from day to day that you should forsake anger, test, and pomposity, that this kingdom does not require these vices, that you should humble yourself like a little child. If you fail to obey these instructions, how can you humble yourself? And if you do not humble yourself, how can you serve God? Overcome evil with good. It is impossible for two cocks to crow on the same roof. You have come into a place as a big man and the person you are meeting in the house is also a big man. He is trying to advise you to humble yourself and you are also trying to advise him to humble himself. He is enjoining you to refrain from sins and you are asking him what sins you have committed because from the beginning you have been a very pious Christian. Brethren, there lies the cause of the problem for the whole world. Search around the world. You will not discover any person who is prepared to become truly repentant. It is not uncommon to come across people who maintain that if they are greeted, they will reciprocate, and if others offend them, they will revenge, and that they do not fear any person. That is why you tend not to have regard for any other person, and you all wander about like sheep without shepherds. Man has the tendency to resist change. Is it not a pathetic situation that a member who has been given a specific instruction to refrain from a particular crime complains that he cannot refrain from it? He therefore cleaves to that which is evil. Upon all the gospels of life delivered to you every day, who amongst you is not behaving like a demented fellow? This is so because you are so saturated with the old wine. You feel that that is better for you. But today our Lord Jesus Christ has sounded a note of warning into your ears that unless you become like a little children, unless you become like little children, you cannot enter into the kingdom. It does not cause any person, even a cobo, to enter into the kingdom. The only price you have to pay is humility. Humility works obedience. Humility consists in listening to pieces of advice and abiding by the instructions accordingly. If you are instructed to sit down, you obey. If you are told to move out, you also obey. What he commands you should do, you have to obey it implicitly. If we had come here with a repenting and penitent heart, by now we would have realized our lives. But what happens? is that today you confess that you are easily infuriated, that you are a thief, that you are a fornicator, then tomorrow morning and throughout the year from January to December, you will confess the same sins. When then will you refrain from infuriation or theft or fornication? Are you are you, are you to get back to what you have vomited? Each day finds you confessing your sins and each day you commit the same sins again. You know that to commit sin is bad and you resolve to refrain from it. 
it means your obstinate your abstinence is beneficial to you brethren I do not want to belabor you with a lengthy discussion the first lesson will now be read first lesson St. John chapter 3 verse 3 Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God brethren have you heard what has hindered a great many people from entering into the kingdom of God if you come across a certain minister of religion he will ask you if you have seen another person he will ask you whether you have not been told that he has founded and establish a church denomination another person will tell you he is the village head and that he is ruling over 40 villages this amounts to one blowing his trumpet at the market square where will such claims lead to repent and be saved is it the responsibility of God to plead with you to save you or is it your responsibility to plead with God to save you? When you are given a vision that you should repent, you become very much exasperated against the vision. An inspiring and life-giving gospel is delivered to you and you despise it and put it into misuse. You have been told not to put your heart in money. You become angry and begin to curse the person who has, who has advised you, telling him that a person who has no money is not fit to live. And what type of life is that for a big man like yourself not to have a cobra in your house? You will ask why God has tested you in that way that it would be better to die than to live without money. Others will complain that their age grades have owned story buildings, but they are wondering about this gracefully and that God should take away their reproach and give them the means to build their own story buildings. Can that be the thinking of a child of God? When he calls, follow him. If John the Baptist had planned to build a house, do you think he would have been able to serve God? If our Lord Jesus Christ had planned to build a house and keep the parents' house in order, marry a wife and beget children, do you think he would have been able to serve God devotedly and diligently? When Peter met our Lord Jesus Christ during which he caught a drought of fishes. If he had taken leave of our Lord Jesus Christ to go and sell the fishes, get money and build houses and do some other things before following him, when do you think you would have met with our Lord Jesus Christ? Remember the young man our Lord Jesus Christ met and asked him to follow him. But the young man said, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. Have you been told somewhere that he ever returned to our Lord Jesus Christ? No, God has called upon us to go to serve in his vineyard. But we want to go into our own vineyard and get money, wife, children, university degrees, build houses, and acquire wealth and property that was what hindered the people of old from following our Lord Jesus Christ as this same factor not constituted a hindrance to those who want to follow God and serve him today you struggle and fight because of food because of women and men or because of land dispute and of children and wealth. You came to see all the mundane things in the world 
and will definitely leave them behind. Your forefathers came to the world to see those things and went back without anything. And because of these, they did not see the kingdom of God. You cannot pass through any other way into the kingdom of God except through this medium. The kingdom of God is within you. A great many people claim that when they die, they will go direct into heaven. Such a belief is inadvertent. Remember when the Pharisees asked our Lord Jesus Christ when the kingdom of God would come? He did not tell them that when they die, they would go to heaven. He told them that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Neither will they say, Lo here or Lo there. For the kingdom of God is within them. Even at this moment you sit here, the kingdom of God is within you. There is no person who is not within the environs of the kingdom of God. That was why he told the people, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You can recognize the fact that if you do not enter, no person prevents you. Rather, you hinder yourself because you have not yet repented. And if you have not repented, nobody is the cause of your failure to enter. From 1st January every year, you preach to people about repentance about love, truth, patience, humility, and the rest of the virtues, but you have not believed. Neither have you accepted to comply with the injunction, nor have you embraced the absolute righteousness of God. This kingdom is being sung in music. It is used in dancing. It is embodied in prayer, in preaching, and in testimonies. Sometimes you are so bamboozled with the behavior of somebody who has been in brotherhood for 20 years that it will appear as if he has never listened to the word of God. Many a times you find some members being exasperated, quarreling, fighting and causing confusion with their white apparel. It seems as if they have never heard the word of God or seen the light. But you will be surprised to hear that such a person is an ordained one. Tell me, how oh, you will be able to do what is good if you continue to cleave to that which is evil? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Our forefathers could not enter this kingdom because of the preaching of the gospel of retaliation, an eye for an eye. They loved those who loved them and hated those who hated them. They could only reciprocate goodness for goodness and pay evildoers with bad comments. In the morning you speak what is good. But in the afternoon, you speak evil about all persons and situations. In the morning, you forgive someone his trespasses. But in the evening, you begrudge him again. You have been told by our Lord Jesus Christ that if you do not forgive and forget, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. <coughs> If you love them who love you, what reward of you? Even Satan loves those who love him. If you do good to them who do good to you, what reward of you? The Pharisees and the scribes did the same thing and they could not enter the kingdom. Pain of tithe is not new. It is a long-standing institution. The Jews paid their tithes regularly. 
You are all too familiar with the story of Zacchaeus, who boasted that he fasted twice a week and gave a tenth part of his wealth as tithe. Remember also the story of the Pharisee and publican who went to pray. The Pharisee stood up and prayed and mentioned that he fasted twice a week and gave tithes of all that he possessed. In spite of this, he could not enter into this kingdom. He therefore compares the behavior of the people of old with the behavior of some young men when he said, Accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes, you cannot enter. Do not harden your heart when you hear him. The scriptures say, again, he limited a certain day saying in David, today after so long a time, because the people could not abide by the commandment, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. It is commonplace knowledge that the Arabs and the Egyptians have for that reason could not enter into the kingdom. The attempts to practice the word of God was closely followed by the Greeks. They tried, but since they had not repented, they could not enter. The British people followed with a determined effort to surpass all earlier ones in practicalizing the word of God, but because they repented not, they could not enter. You have heard of the mighty and magnificent cathedrals they built. The next group of people who wanted to serve God was a group of British people who called themselves the Puritans or Pilgrim Fathers who left Britain and settled down in America to practice the word of God because they were not given the freedom to practice the word of God in Britain. In America they tried as much as lies within their power to practicalize the words of God, but could not, and so they did not enter also. Your righteousness must surpass that of the Jews before you can enter into the kingdom. If there is somebody who does not eat, he does not live in a house but in the forest, does not marry a wife, does not have children, but yet he could not enter into the kingdom. How much more you who go about prostituting, fornicating, stealing, drinking round the town, quarreling and fighting, will you ever enter? If a person who fasts twice a week and gives a tenth of his wealth as tight and does not commit fornication, does not hate any person, obeys his father and mother, but could not enter. How much less you who do not pay tight, nor fast, nor refrain from fornication. How will you enter? In some countries, people do not eat meat. They do not drink and do not indulge in the preparation of concoction, charm and talisman. And yet, could not enter. This is to indicate to you that this kingdom is uh, that this kingdom has suffered violence and only the courageous one will take it. It is not the usual slogan as the father likes it, but it is based on struggling. Only the very strong one will be able to stand others will squat or sleep but remember the scriptures say that except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the pharisees and scribes you will not enter this is not the warfare about money about children about quarreling but that your but that of righteousness except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes, 
you will not enter into the kingdom of God if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the church denomination and your forefathers, it will be impossible that you can enter. The climatic conditions of the kingdom. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not hide anything when he was sermonizing about righteousness, love, humility, mercy, respect for people, meekness to others, peace with others, where there is no quarreling, no fastidiousness, no murmuring and no pride. If you do not possess all these attributes, it means your righteousness has not exceeded that of the forefathers. This does not imply that if you have no children, you will not enter. Neither has it been told to you that if you do not have money or become a chief, you will not enter. Have you not realized how oh, you rather look for mundane things which are not profitable to any person in this kingdom of God? Wealth and knowledge are not prerequisite for entry. The mundane things are only the shadow of things which do not exist. If we were after money, then in this country we have a lot of money magnets in Britain, America, Europe, Asia, Japan, China and other places there are multi-millionaires but money is not a prerequisite. Money is not a prerequisite for entry into the kingdom of God. If you talk about the wisdom of this world, you go to the western countries and you will find men with very high attainment in education, the professors, the great men of learning, the scientists, the philosophers, great men of learning. If you talk about kingship, the blacks have no kings. It is only in the western world that you have the great kings who keep the royal traditions like that of English royal throne. But in spite of their royal position and tradition, they cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Those of you who are still looking for the chieftaincy position, those of you who will want to be kings, traditional rulers, emperors, and those of you who still look for children, remember that there are that there are everywhere in the world chiefs, paramount rulers, kings, emperors. There are also those who have many prominent children. These are mundane, but the prerequisite is that of their righteousness exceeding the righteousness of the Pharisees and the Christ. Otherwise, they cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Righteousness alone exalts a nation. You are testifying that you are a very lucky generation, that God is now born in your midst amongst the blacks. Do not forget that God sometimes manifested himself among the whites and they did not receive him because they did not repent and they did not receive him and they could not enter. Do you suppose if he rises among the blacks and your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the whites that you will enter? You further testify that in the past it was the whites who brought the gospel of God to the blacks. But now the reverse is the order because the blacks now go to evangelize the whites. If the whites brought the gospel of Christ to the blacks and did not enter because they did not repent, do you think that your taking the words of God to them will cause you to enter if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the whites? If you compare the villages, towns and cities in Britain, United States of America, France, Japan, Australia, with the ones we have in Nigeria, you will shed tears because of their incompatibility. Although the people live in such beautiful cities, they cannot be admitted into the kingdom of God because they have no righteousness. 
The kingdom of God does not consist in beautiful and magnificent houses, nor in building several stories, nor building a skyscraper, or having a number of children, or occupying the highest position in the world. But the condition is that if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes, it is impossible that you can enter. Our second lesson will now be read.